Today's show is all about uncommon vegetables, such as leeks, okra, artichokes, and garlic. First, I'm gonna start with one of my favorites, the globe artichoke, steamed and served with warm tarragon butter. Next, I'm gonna show you how to braise leeks with chicken stock, white wine, and butter until they are fork tender and so delicious. Fried okra that has been dipped in cornmeal and served with a squeeze of fresh lemon is just fantastic. We all use cloves of garlic, too, in our cooking. But did you know that you can roast whole heads, which totally changes the flavor? It's delicious when spread on a slice of crusty bread. Artichokes are a species of thistle that are grown as food. There are many different kinds of artichokes. This is a beautiful imperial star artichoke, and this is a green globe. Uh, this kind of artichoke is grown primarily in California. And uh, as you can see, artichokes have a very sharp thorn at the tip of each leaf. But don't let that intimidate you. Even if you get pricked by an artichoke, uh, take some home and master a few simple steps, and you'll want to eat them as often as I do. It's uh, easy to prepare an artichoke. You cut off the bottom stem like that. It's nice and white. Choose artichokes that are unblemished, that have no brown spots, uh, that are firm and heavy for their size. Artichokes um, are extremely healthy. Oh, by the way, look at this. Cutting right through with a serrated knife. And then I always kind of loosen them a little bit, like that. And then uh, it makes it easier to trim the tips of the leaves with sharp kitchen shears. And just cut like this all the way around. It takes a little bit of time. You can prepare your artichokes um, way before dinner time and put them in acidulated water, which is water in which uh, one or two lemons have been squeezed. This will prevent browning and uh, it'll actually add a nice little flavor to the meat of the artichoke. That's it, it doesn't take much time at all. And just put this right into the acidulated water. So you can see these are all beautiful. They still have the choke inside. This is the choke of the artichoke. It is where the thistle, um, I call it the hoary core, rests. And you'll remove that after cooking. So these are ready to put into steaming water in a steamer basket. This is a steamer basket. Every kitchen should have one of these. Fits nicely into this size pan. And then I steam upside down and quite a lot of salt in the water. I'd say a tablespoon, maybe even a tablespoon and a half of salt. Adds a lot of flavor to the artichokes. And I often put even more lemon right on top of the artichokes. Just squeeze lemon juice right on that cut stem end, like that. And you can throw the lemon right in there, too. In fact, I'm just going to throw these lemons into the water, like that. And I sprinkle with a little bit more salt on the stem end and a sprig of tarragon to flavor the water. Cover and steam. This is going to take about, oh, 35 minutes. And make sure that you have a full boil in order for the steam to really cook the artichoke quickly. Check every now and then, because uh, if that water disappears, you'll have burnt artichokes. So you might have to add some boiling water to the pot. So this is about a tablespoon of chopped fresh tarragon. And you add this to 3 quarters of a cup, one and a half sticks, of melted unsalted butter. I always like to add my salt rather than rely on salted butter. Uh, so let that just steep for a little bit. That is your butter sauce for the artichokes. Now let's see if the bottoms are easily pierced. Look how simply and easily the stem ends are pierced with that point of a knife. Every one. It's a little bit of resistance, but not very much. The artichokes are done. So now remove them 
And I either put them on a towel, upside down, just to let all excess moisture run off like that. And they can cool just slightly. So use a, a spoon that has a nice sharp edge like that. And spread the artichoke. It's hot. Ooh. You can use this to start if you want and pull. That is edible, so save that intact if you can. And now we're down to the fuzzy choke. And this will easily scrape out with your spoon. This is what you want to get out of there. All of that with very sharp thistly tips. That's the center of the thistle of the artichoke flower, not edible. Put this on the plate. And I like the way that Jean Georges serves this at the Marc restaurant. He has a little bit of frise in the center, a little bit of champagne vinegar, olive oil. Malden sea salt, and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Just toss that. And this can fill that center, like this, makes it pretty. Looks good. And your tarragon butter, serve that in a little dish on the side. This is enough butter for at least four artichokes. And accompany the whole serving with your butter. Some wedges of freshly cut lemon, sprinkled with a little bit of the mold and salt, tiny bit more pepper, a little lemon juice. And to eat, well, it's very simple. You just pull off a leaf like that this is the meaty part of the leaf. Dip it in the tarragon butter. Mmm. Drag the leaf against your teeth. Perfectly cooked. I don't know if there is any truth to it being said that artichokes are an aphrodisiac, but they are one of my favorite vegetables. While leeks may be a member of the onion and garlic family, they have a sweeter, more delicate flavor that lends a subtle accent to a variety of recipes. They're my favorite onion garlic uh, member, and I just adore them. This is a well-grown young leek. They can be sauteed, baked, roasted. My favorite way to prepare leeks is to braise them like they do in France. Good quality leeks are firm and they're smooth and they're free of any blemishes. And to prepare them, cut off the green leaves, reserve these leaves. You can soak them in a little water to make sure there's no dirt accumulating um, in this part of the leaf, this V form. See, there's a little dirt right there because they do grow so close to the, um, to the garden soil. And cut off the root end right here right below where the roots start. This is important because you do not want the leaves to separate. Each leaf is separate, and if you cut, I'll, I'll show you, if you cut up here, and when you cut the leek in half like this, you're just gonna have just a bunch of leaves. That's not what you want. So be very, very careful when you cut the leek. I'll reserve this for the stock pot. So now cut only to the beginning of the roots. Now this will not fall apart. Take the leaves off and slice the leek in half lengthwise. See, this will not fall apart. Now these have to be washed. Put this uh, leek and all the other cut leeks in a bowl of uh, water and rinse very, very well to get all that dirt out. And then put, the, put them back together like that and they're ready to cook. We have some that are all ready for the beginning process of the braising. I like to brown the leeks just slightly in 
oh, about three tablespoons of butter in a big, heavy skillet. The leeks will actually braise in this same skillet. Once the butter is bubbling and melted, uh, put the leeks in the butter, cut side down. Three minutes on the cut side, then turn them over three minutes on the rounded side. So let's see how these are. Yep, this slightly, lightly colored. Gently turn. So this has about a minute more to brown. Uh, we have to make a cartouche or a piece of parchment that will cover the contents of the pan. This is very easily done if you take a piece of parchment big enough to fit in the pan and fold it into first a rectangle, then a square, then a triangle, and then another triangle. So you're gonna have 16 segments like that. Hold this in the center of the pan and mark this. This will be exactly right and cut it off like that. Easier than tracing and cutting all the way around. So see, I have a perfect cartouche which will fit right down on top of the cooking leeks. So now turn the leeks over again so that the rounded outside is facing up. These have gotten a, a really beautiful golden brown color. You don't want to get them too dark. You don't want to burn them. There. Okay, so now add your liquids and salt and pepper. Sprinkle with coarse salt and black pepper or white pepper. A half a cup of chicken broth. This is a homemade chicken stock and a half a cup of dry white wine. Cover with your cartouche. Now this cartouche really is uh, meant to uh, control the rate of evaporation and all those flavors in the liquid are imparted to the leeks. Now, and vice versa, of course. Now turn this down very low and continue cooking. Uh, for leeks this size, about 15 minutes. For bigger, fatter leeks, it's gonna take longer. But when you pierce the leek with a uh, paring knife, uh, the leek must be very tender. So we're just gonna wait for 15 minutes until we're done. Now to check the doneness, just lift the parchment up. <gasps> look how good they look. And pierce with the point of a sharp knife. Look tender. They look buttery and delicious. It's been 15 minutes. You can just remove the parchment to a waste bowl. Can't use that again, so don't worry. And now remove the leeks a couple at a time and place on your serving platter. And these look good. Now, to embellish some nice coarsely chopped parsley right here at the tips. and mold and salt. I love this salt because it, look how crystalline it is. It's really shiny and beautiful and a little crunchy. And people love this. And I'm just gonna put a little row of salt here. And some freshly ground black pepper over the whole thing. And there you have a really, really beautiful, savory vegetable dish that everybody's going to love. I think you're going to really like making these and eating this easy classic French recipe. Now, this is okra. It's known as a Southern favorite, but the rest of America is beginning to catch on to this delicious vegetable. Today, I'm gonna to show you one of the most common and best ways to cook it. If you've never tried okra before, this is a great recipe. Now it's essential that you get okra that is tender, uh, very nicely colored, no brown spots. It shouldn't be shriveled and it shouldn't be dry. And it should also be able to be cut easily with a knife. 
If the knife is offered any resistance whatsoever by the okra, that is way too old to cook. So just discard that. Now um, remember, uh, after you wash it, dry it very, very well. Pat it dry. I buy okra in the farmer's market, um, or I get it right out of my garden. It's a beautiful plant. It's related to the hibiscus family, and the flowers are very hibiscus-like. They are also edible. Uh, now to prepare for frying, just cut off the tops, the stem end, like this, and cut the okra into half-inch pieces. You see how easily this is cut? These little tips, well, they're not right for frying, so I just kind of discard those or add them to the stock pot. I like okra stewed, I like it in gumbo. But this is something that you'll all enjoy, fried okra coated in a cornmeal and served with a remoulade sauce. So here we have our okra already cut up. I have three egg whites in this dish and I'm going to thin those with three tablespoons of cold water. Whisk this up. Just break up the egg whites. And the oil is a vegetable oil. Uh, you could use olive oil if you like the taste of olive oil. You could use canola or just a good quality vegetable oil. So get this a little frothy. And I suggest, well, you have to use your fingers, so I suggest using one hand for the wet and one hand for the dry. In the cornmeal, uh, this is one cup of beautiful cornmeal. A quarter cup of flour is added to that. Use an unbleached flour. Half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, ground at, uh, as a little zip. And black pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon. And two teaspoons of salt. I think this kind of fried food needs salt. And this is not greasy fried food. This is like a, a little snack. So that's ready for dipping. OK, so we're working with a small amount of okra first. Just push this around in the egg white mixture, egg white and water. And then just place it in the cornmeal. And the oil should be heated to 375 degrees. So this looks good. Now you can just put all your coated okra onto a piece of parchment paper and drop these into the hot oil. Now these are browning very nicely, very quickly. These are done. Such a beautiful golden color. Just remove them to a paper towel covered baking sheet and start frying the next batch. I'll show you how easy it is to make a very flavorful remoulade. To one cup of mayo, you can use low fat mayo if you want or homemade mayo. Add one tablespoon of finely chopped parsley, a tablespoon of finely chopped basil leaves, two tablespoons of milk, which thins out the mayonnaise a little bit, quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, two teaspoons of finely chopped shallot, some salt, two um, tablespoons of champagne vinegar, and a squeeze of lemon juice. Also serve these, if you will, with some wedges of lemon. People like lemon and okra. Stir this all up. This you can make the day before and get all the flavors melded together. It's a very delicious remoulade. So we have right here a platter and some remoulade sauce. You can just put the first batch of okra here. Don't forget to sprinkle it with salt while it's still hot. And then dip it in your remoulade and taste. Mmm, really, really good. I think that batch is for me. You can make all the rest for you. 
Garlic is one of those vegetables that is never at the center of the plate, yet it is essential in nearly all of the world's cuisines. But today we're going to make garlic the star by roasting it whole. As the garlic roasts, it transforms into sweet caramelized cloves that you can use with just about anything, pasta, potatoes, meat, fish, or simply spread on your favorite crusty bread. Now, garlic comes in two uh, ways, basically. Hard neck, which this is. You can see how hard this long stem is, um, or soft neck. Uh, choose bulbs that are large and plump and firm. And garlics generally have anywhere from six to 24 cloves inside. As garlic ages, it starts to shrivel and begins to sprout little green sprouts. Those garlics you should avoid. Those green sprouts uh, create a bitterness in the cloves of the garlic that just are not very tasty. Good quality garlic uh, will keep, uh, I just keep it right on my counter uh, for up to about three or four weeks. Uh, if you want to prolong the life of garlic, you can also keep it in the dry area of your refrigerator, well wrapped in a uh, paper towel or a brown paper bag. So now, to roast the garlic. Uh, first, cut off, make sure it's nice and clean, and uh, any loose skins uh, removed. Cut off about an eighth of the top of the clove. There. Right through the hard neck, which is in the center. So there you're exposing a little bit of the top of the cloves of the garlic. And I just leave the root end right on and do it to this one. This one has still one little piece of papery skin. I grow a lot of garlic and it's now just uh, getting uh, ready to consume. It's been drying in my barn, and oh, it is so beautiful, the garlic. There, shake out, that's another beautiful one. This has six, this has nine cloves of garlic in it. A little bit of salt and pepper right on the top of the flesh. Now I have a piece of foil lined with parchment. I like to uh, roast, uh, not against the aluminum foil, but always in parchment if possible. A little bit of coarse salt, and a sprinkling of olive oil. Just a tiny bit for flavor, as well as a little bit of moisture. Here you have your little package. Put it in your preheated oven uh, at 425 for about an hour to an hour and a quarter. And when it comes out, well, you'll see. So now unwrap your garlic. It smells really delicious and it looks mighty delicious also. Look at this, caramelized. Very, very pretty. Mm. Now you'll see how utterly tender it is when I take one clove out. You can, these pop right out of the papery shell like this. And it's soft and just toasty, crusty bread, and it's almost like garlic butter. That's what it reminds me of. And this may actually be your new favorite way to eat garlic. Thanks all of you for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Cooking School. Begin by removing the outer leaves of eight baby artichokes, then trim both the bases and the tops. Transfer to a bowl of acidulated water. Pat dry and thinly slice on a mandolin. Drizzle with olive oil and lemon juice. Season with coarse salt and pepper and toss to combine. Serve on a bed of escarole with shaved Parmesan cheese and basil.